Okay. Um, let's start. I'm looking for a facilitator for the next meeting. I am. I'm going to be out. I'm actually going to be at the COP26 summit, which I'm super excited about. Which summit? COP26, the UN Climate Summit. Oh, oh, that. Oh, fun. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Open UK. We've got like a whole day there. And so they're basically sending the whole board and a bunch of other people up to. Where is it? Uh, Glasgow. OK. Right so, now. I mean, I, I'll be stuck in our like Open UK area. I won't get to hobnob with like important people but just being you're closer to those important there. people than <laughs> yeah there. one you're one step closer than i am to those important <laughs> people yeah. I, i'm happy to facilitate next time no problem okay um action item comment that was that's just me so this is one thing that came out of the DEI working group and then we talked about it in the community call. I just wanted to bring it to every working group and the idea is we were talking about mentorship and mentorship is a big ask for a lot of people to do so we were trying to think of easier. Um, or maybe like lower 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 commitment things and one is as uh, working groups have action items that two people are assigned to an action item and perhaps one of those people could be a more senior person or somebody who's been in the project longer and the other person could be somebody who's new to the project and it kind of time bounds the mentorship to just a single action item um, and it just helps get newcomers um, more integrated with the project cool i like that idea so like um a senior person is guiding the junior one for the work or both are doing it together both would just do it together i don't think there has to be any sort of official okay you know you can I almost mean, think of it more like like pair programming where yeah. you, know, you, you sit together and you work on you work on a task together and learn from each other exactly that's it and action items can still be one person. I mean, if sometimes it's silly to assign two people to an action item or. Yeah, especially when like, it's like create a PR for that thing we just talked about. Yeah, or email the Linux Foundation okay. about an event request. Yeah. I don't know, sometimes it doesn't take two, but. Cool. Anything else on that item? Okay. So I thought we'd review the open issues and PRs. I don't think we have any PRs. Sweet. Um, and then issues, let's see, we don't have anything new in the issues. These are all things that we've been kind of talking about before. This is an ongoing one that's always there. And the others are metrics that we are kind of working on on and off. Yep. So unless there's something someone wants to talk about specifically on one of these, I think we're probably. No, I wondered if we should maybe, not even just for common, but across all working groups, one of the things that we're asked to do between now and the next release, or just kind of starting now, is to review all of our released metrics, just because they like what we the sentences we typed may have been bad sentences and we reread them and they're better yeah. now and or we can edit them or, or the metric changes a little bit or we've learned something new over the course of a year and we just want to add something to the objectives um and so like in dei yesterday we we took a look at the code of conduct metric again which i thought was going to be fine but we did a huge amount of editing on it <laughs> which, <laughs> which was great and now we'll we'll have to do that too but i wonder if we should open an issue that we can track the metrics that we are that we have re-reviewed i'm not sure and how I... you... oh go ahead Vinod. yeah how we are reviewing it it's like you are taking the markdown and converting into the google doc again and then reviewing yeah it? that's what we did so we just basically okay. i just copied the raw markdown just put it back into a google doc because we didn't want to okay. go to the original google doc because sometimes that's yep. different than the the markdown too so we just created a new markdown file 
we all went in there for you know 10 15 minutes and made our edits there and then once we were done with those edits one person will just again redo a, a pr just kind of a full 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 slate pr to overwrite the overwrite the existing metric um, and we were updating the um, spreadsheet to kind of also identify if a metric has been re um, like re-examined and has some updates to it but we may want to open an issue now that I'm in the issues that just kind of tracks that progress as well. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Um, do you want sure. yeah, to take the action that. item to create yep. that? No problem. So okay. A side, side note on the Google Doc, Google Sheet, we have a link to the metric. One points to the markdown, then it's a time to maybe have a link to the Google Doc too as a column so that we can track yeah the... yeah we will we'll slowly update the spreadsheet as we figure out the workflow okay 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 so i will give um matt the action item to create the issue to track this cool um anything else on the issues anybody wants to talk about okay um now we do have we we have um a couple of additional things on the agenda so i think matt the occasional and consistent contributors which was uh, the episodic contributors did you get a chance to to work on that this week I don't remember. Not like this week, because I know I didn't Last do it this week. week. But yeah, I may have, there may be some changes. I can tell you what I did on Monday through Wednesday, and it was not this. Mm, looks like no. Okay. Um. So I I missed the last meeting. So do we do we want to do this kind of in the meeting or do we want to um, do you want to take this back and do some work on it and bring it back at the next one? I love working on things in meetings. We get so much done, even if it's just five or 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we can do that. Let's look at the rest of the stuff on the agenda first, okay. just to make sure. Um, did you review the metrics tracking spreadsheet last last time we met? Mm, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think we just we kind of followed that process that you have here. Okay. Then we probably don't because it's not something we need to do every single time. But mm. if you did it, if you did it last uh, in the last meeting, we could probably skip that. Yeah. And then yeah. the only other thing we had on the agenda was uh, discuss metrics to work on next, which I think you talked about a little bit in the last meeting. We did. Um, is there anything else we need to do there, or should we something we should just kind of continue to think about? I think maybe the it make make most sense to just work on the episodic or the whatever the occasional and consistent contributors. And if we have time, maybe we could pull out one of our old metrics, like for the oh, reexamination. Okay. Yep. Take a look at one of those. Okay. Well, since you're driving the uh, occasional and consistent contributors, I'll stop sharing so that you can share your screen. Okay. I'm trying to get that issue typed. <laughs> Sorry, if you want me to go back, I can share my screen again. I just I put a, a really rough issue in there. I'll update it here okay. in a second. Yeah, just because we also want to track the uh, Elizabeth brought up that we want to also track the version, the release version when we're re-examining metrics. But I'm something along those yes. lines. Okay, um, let's see, I, I can share my screen. Okay. Okay, and hi Beth. All right. Um, so I think a lot of you probably, this has been a few things. Um, and the idea here is that we're trying to uh, capture contributors that that kind of enter the project occasionally or and I think we move towards occasionally because episodic has an implication that there is some sort of rhythm 
to them returning, like they return every three months or something like that. And that's really not what this is about. Um, and I, I was also just at a, I don't remember where I was talking to, but the value of occasional contributors and the, just the reality that they exist and not every contributor will be converted to a, a consistent contributor. And that's totally okay, <laughs> you know? Um, I like that idea because I think I'd, I'd always thought of occasional contributors as something, uh, an individual that we're trying to have become a regular co contributor to a project, and maybe that's not always the case. Um, so if if we could, I don't know if anybody has comments kind of on that high level overview of occasional contributors. Um, are we defining what an occasional contributor is so I can tell you how DevStats defines this because be I was cool. just yeah. I was just looking at this. Um, so they someone who hasn't uh, submitted a PR in at least three months. Here I'll just copy this in there. Okay. And hasn't had more than twelve PRs overall in the project. Okay. Um, so this is how it's defined for the CNCF DevStats metrics. It's, do they use the phrase occasional contributors too? Uh, let me, I'll just copy and paste it. Sorry, I just lost my window. Okay. My presentation. If um, somebody else has defined it, let's just use that. And they, um, okay, so, I'll just, sorry, I'm just going to type my notes in there. And let's see, um, they call them episodic. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I think the, the biggest issue that came up last time with episodic was just that thing that I talked about, that there's some episodic implies something <laughs> there, there's every three month return. So, uh, yeah, and I also ten... think episodic isn't a word that a lot of people will have run across. Okay, um, just globally. You know what I mean, like it's not, yep. it's not a common word that you see all the time in the English language. Yep. Then what is the issue with drive through contributors that is also used highly? in this context? Um, uh, yeah, I think that's, I don't know, maybe the occasional, <laughs> to be honest with you, so drive through obviously has like the history with drive by that we have moved and then fly by shows up occasionally, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. And obviously we're not using drive by. Um, so maybe occasional just kind of takes us out of that conversation altogether. <laughs> And just says, you know what, <laughs> there, there are these other terms that people use and, you know, perhaps even in the description, we could say IE, yep. flyby, and drive through contributors. Don, do you have the link to that, the URL? I was, yeah. I was just grabbing that. I'll just grab, okay. I'll see if I can just grab an example from like Kubernetes or something. Okay. Yeah. So maybe the comment Don has put, uh, like the quotes uh, from Devastars that Don has posted, we can use it as an example for this as a, rather than like uh, taking this as a description, maybe it, this can be an example for us. Sure, we can write that in the description. Yes. I mean, we can just say an occasional contributor is, uh, for ex is, is somebody who right. blah, 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 for yeah. example, Devstats defines this. Right. such a contributor as okay um anybody else on the call have comments kind of on what the thought is here my only other comment is the visualization doesn't match up with our terminology i don't know if that if anyone cares about that or if we're good with that i can just i can crop it i can <laughs> <laughs> lower that ever so slightly <laughs> i mean to be fair like any data collection that we're using on any metric might not necessarily match up 100 percent with what we're calling a metric so mm -hmm. um, like we call change requests obviously and then github uses pull requests so um maybe it's it's fine i think it's maybe if we just up in the description we honestly we do just say you know the yeah. ID. Uh, the there is a, a paragraph, uh, this one, many folks. So here we are clarifying why we are not calling it drive by or any other term. Like this one I have highlighted. All 
Okay. Um, so maybe I could stop the recording and if we could maybe just spend a few minutes, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, just um, working in this document and helping me with work that I was supposed to do. <laughs> so I'll stop my share and then just pause the recording. Session. So hi, welcome back everybody. Thank you for your uh, suggestions and thoughts on um, this metric. I'll share my screen again on the occasional contributors metric. Um, okay, so maybe two things. One is, is there anything anybody would like to talk, talk about? Elizabeth, you added. Yeah, I have something. <laughs> <laughs> in the very first the question um we say contribute a little but i don't think this metric is about the size of the contribution or the the um, nature of it it's about the frequency so we yeah no, that's fair that yeah everybody yeah, agrees yeah. Yep. infrequently If you say that, I would just get rid of the word only. That seems awkward. Contributors contribute. And then we have contributors contribute. Sorry, now I'm a fan of word smithy. No, I, I've, I've had sentences pointed out to me where I'm using the same word like three times differently in a sentence. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's probably a pretty bad idea. <laughs> um, Maybe how many people contribute infrequently. Yeah. Or, haven't we? We've talked about this, how we use the language around people, contributors, um, participants. Did we ever? We talked I think about so. finding that. Okay. No, I don't think we've ever landed on anything for that. And it's not really about <laughs> this whole question. It's not really about how many people. Like, it's how do we understand these occasional contributions? I, I, like, to me, this question is about counting people who contribute infrequently. Maybe that's what we want to do. Hi, I'm just um, I'm thinking of, uh, I was looking at this and I was thinking of how a community will adopt this metrics, for example, and I'm saying like um, how many people, um, um, I'm just thinking of how the adoption will go. Would that be mainly like um, a number of people for like a project that doesn't maybe quantify um, numbers of people um, mm -hmm. as regards contribution, especially in the context of open source. Um, so I don't know if the language, how many people um, would be easily adopted uh, um, in this, um, you know, in this context. I'm just thinking if there's a similar metrics like this where people participants or number was mentioned and I could maybe look at that uh, mm -hmm. and understand this uh, a bit more clearly. I think at the, the colon visualization, um, it looks like they're they're counting number of contributors. Um, the way it looks, so the dev stats one is really hard to read, but um, so this is episodic and new on the same graph. And it shows both the number of episodic contributors and the number of contributions from those episodic contributors. So, so from this standpoint, what I, what I like, I, so this is a terrible, ugly graph, but what I like about it is that um, you can see where you're getting episodic and new contributors who are contributing more than once in a time period, which makes it really, really interesting. So I think getting back to Regina's question, that's kind of an interesting, interesting way to use this, um, this sort of metric. This doesn't help me with, with the question. I was gonna say, oh, so no, let's put that into a question. <laughs> you were like a step ahead of me. <laughs> I feel like it might make the question too complicated, but. Um... <laughs> well, how maybe, um... What happened there? How do we understand the number of 
um, occasional contributors as well as oops the volume of contributions that these that the like that I do kind of like that because I feel like the ultimate goal is to um, to to indicate the impact of occasional contributors and and like the balance between that and regular maybe or, a percentage yeah like, I added that as filters as, but... as a percentage of contributions how many contributions are made by occasional contributors like twenty five percent of our contributions come from occasional contributors mm -hmm. or yep. So the and the I simplified that a little bit. You can accept I, or reject those as needed. I guess our focus is defining the occasional rather than the level of volume or of their contribution. I actually I actually wouldn't put percentage in the question. I would put it in the oh in the filters. Filters or implementation. Yes. Yeah, I put it as a filter before. Um, yeah, I think it's important, and um, yeah. it, it's something that's definitely, definitely interesting. Yep. Because to I me, agree. that's what I would be most interested in is the percent. Yeah. So that the percentage of contributions coming from occasional contributors is interesting, yeah. but it is yes. also interesting to compare the number of contributions um, to the episodic contributors to see are they just are they just contributing once and going away, or are they contributing a few times? There's a bunch of different ways to look at this, I think, yeah. is my, my point. Okay. Regina, does this also address the question that you had brought up? Yes, I think, and it brought some um, different sides to it, um, which is good. And then um, looking at it from a filter point, the percent, percentage aspect as well is interesting. Yeah, like, um, like Don said, there's the different um, sides to it, but it's addressed it, yeah. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Okay, so is maybe this question's gone. And on my new action item of cleaning this up, um, it'll be good because we can kind of revisit this question in a couple weeks and see if it still resonates. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth, did you want to talk about about this? Uh, I just added a few on there. We may want to build these out a little. Uh, I don't know how. It sounds a little informal to me. Some of them, um, and they didn't quite like match, you know. But um, that might be like a second pass. This was just a first draft, so I just added a few bullets at the end of that okay. of reasons that I could see why people might be, be an occasional contributor. Okay. There is an entire paper on this uh, reasons for being contributors. Reasons for being a contributor or reasons for being an occasional contributor? Reasons for being a contributor. And okay. we can observe the similar pattern or things in, from that. Does the motivation section, I, I like the section, does it belong in the description or does it belong somewhere else? Uh, really, our only two spots for this kind of text are the description and the objectives. Okay. And I don't think it's objectives. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Everything else becomes kind of pragmatic, you know, like filters, visualizations. Okay. I was mulling on this. Does anyone think that there is um, a benefit in tracking like uh, repeat occasional contributors? Like, are they just coming in and dropping something off? Or are they 
coming back and every three months they contribute three tiny little things like would that let us find uh people who seem like they're they they want to be more engaged but they don't know how and potentially reach out to them i think that would be a great oh filter <laughs> as i look yeah, at your mouth waving <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, Beth. Okay. Um, any other comments that people have that they want to bring forward on this metric? All right, all good. All right, action item for myself. Oops. Um, maybe I should not say clean up the comments to address the comments. Um, so per our, maybe our first action item comment in this meeting, would anybody like to, to join me in working on this? Yes. Since I'm new, yes, I would like to join you. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Regina. Yeah. Um, Regina, are you on Slack? No, I've actually not joined Slack. Okay. But um, yeah, I only registered on the mailing list um, and that's it. This is my second time. So I was um, actually um, trying to get more acquainted with the community. And um, so, yeah, I would like to join the Slack now. Awesome. Could you, do you have an email address that I could just yes. connect you with? And then I'll get you on the Slack channel, all that kind of stuff too. Okay, that's fine. Great, thanks. Would you like me to share it here or in... you can just put it in the chat okay. i'll just pick it up there okay. if that works for you and you can send it privately to matt if you don't want it public mm -hmm. okay great cool thank you well i think that was pretty much all of the stuff that we had on the agenda given that it's not really we don't really mm -hmm. have enough time to start a new new item but i feel like we made a ton of progress on this occasional contributors metric so i think this was definitely time well spent so thanks matt cool and thank you everybody and then maybe for next time we can kind of talk through the this again and then start addressing just some of the metrics that we've released in the past as well all right Perfect. I, I got your email regina thank you Okay, with that, I think we're, I think we've finished the meeting. So, so thanks everybody for coming and for all of the participation. This was, this was good. Thanks everybody. Don, I'll see you in Napa. Yep. I'll see you then. Bye. Have fun. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye everybody. Yeah.